What is going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and welcome back to more Battleborn. Today we get to focus on possibly my favorite character of the initial bunch. Sure, I love Arendi and her magic hands. I've got a new soft spot for Miko after playing the mushroom itself in full at Gamescom, but Phoebe is where my heart currently lies because she is the master and commander of my 200 plus kill, 110,000 plus point destruction derby round where I exact complete battlefield control and chaos over every single enemy. You're about to witness us put on a clinic with this girl who may seem feeble at first with her rapier, but that thing does a whole lot more than wiggle, and we will show you by starting off uh, in our own DNA, selecting some of our skills to better ourselves. She's part of the Last Light Consortium, and boy does she pack a punch. Uh, this is where we get to decide who and how we want our Phoebe to be, and I'm gonna put a lot of points uh, into the Blade Rush skill, which fires off four rapiers straight at an enemy. That gave it the ability to stun said enemy. She also has a teleport ability uh, called Phase Gate, which we just gave an electric aftercharge. Uh, gonna give some base damage boost to our melee, and finally, add explosive damage to our Blade Rush Rapier Barrage. And if you guys enjoy these Battleborn videos, want to see more of them, character featurettes, and news and info, as we approach the now announced February 9th, 2016 release date, just hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what characters and what you want to see in the comments down below, and I will bring it your way. She looks like she might be a little bit slim, a little bit slight on the attack damage. The dress, though, should not fool you, because I swear... Phoebe was probably the craziest Battleborn got for me uh, in my time on this mission, and it really shows you how varied the characters are. You've seen Arendi and kind of the blast from above, now you're seeing a teleporting girl who fences her way to stardom, and that stardom comes in bunches, huge bunches. We're playing alongside uh, Oscar Mike, Thorn, uh, Boulder, and uh, somebody else. I don't know, I don't spend a whole lot of time looking at everyone else uh, in this match because it's literally me going to work on everybody. That's Blade Rush right there, you've seen uh, the lovely um, phase gate as well which ends in that sort of electric sizzle. And we are going to go to work and do our darndest to take out everyone as quickly as I can. And this kind of shows you how you could really start speedrunning slash just kind of trying to master each story mission. Um, they still haven't talked much about multiplayer, which I'm very excited for, but we did get some new details at Gamescom, including four new characters who all look freaking different. Uh, Montana is the fourth character there, the big dude uh, with the massive guns. But we saw Benedict, who is a eagle, right? An, an eagle, and he flies across the battlefield, which is insane, doing things that just kind of totally mix up the formula at every one of the 25 characters, uh, which I really appreciate. Um, as different as you've seen, it seems like they're only going to get crazier, and I can't wait to see what some of the later characters to be announced hold within, because I would assume and imagine that possibly some of the, the kookiest and most unique uh, have been yet to be revealed. Um, there's an Egyptian weird goddess woman thing who's laying down fire across large swaths of the battlefield. It just gets absolutely epic. And I love their focus on story. I got to hear a presentation by Randy Pitchford himself um, at Gamescom over there in Cologne, Germany, and he was highlighting uh, sort of the, the broad stroke, the overview of this story of The Last Star, where all the Battleborn come to kind of lay their claim uh, to this final world, this final planet, and what they want to do with it. Some want to just destroy it, some want to save it, some have some religious prophecy to fulfill, some don't even know what they're doing, but just like fighting. Uh, but these Battleborn are all there, and they kind of come together uh, to make something happen, because they can't let the Vrelsi, who are the bad guys in the game, kind of the vampire-esque creatures, um, take control and sort of work their own plan uh, over this last star in the universe itself. It was just a really awesome opportunity to see how much depth there is within Battleborn, and I think that's going to play to its success and strength uh, next February when it comes out. Having 25 unique characters, having a full-on single player, having a bunch of multiplayer MOBA-esque modes, and, and what else not uh, that the game holds. And one of those what else nots is loot. I had no idea that loot and gear um, were in this game, but it's pretty darn incredible to see. Uh, it adds a whole nother layer that, again, just replayability, depth, and sort of personality slash personalization, customization, um, really take the forefront here. So as you can see, uh, you get to pick a character who is very full of life, both in their skill set and their appearance uh, and their, you know, voice acting. On top of that, you're going to choose these 10 different uh, DNA decisions that have a left or right option, and eventually we'll have a third option um, once you level up sort of your meta character that 
exists over the course of the entire game, not just the little mini uh, mission itself where you go from 1 to 10, but a, a bigger overall leveling system, which I'm super excited for. So you're getting to select things there, but then this loot gear system adds an entire new layer uh, where you'll be able to equip, I believe it's three pieces, uh, to your character, and they come in sort of the Borderlands variety of, like, orange and purple and blue and, and different rarities uh, that you'll be acquiring. Um, and I believe those are going to be unlocked and sort of, like, loot dropped throughout your progress in the game, uh, and that would encourage replaying missions and whatnot, which has me excited, because I've played this mission a bunch of times, and it doesn't get old because I'm switching characters, I'm trying to go faster, I'm trying to reach higher score totals. Now, on top of that, if I can get a loot drop and have sort of that you know, roll the dice chance to get a purple, that just makes it all the much better and all the more fun, especially if they tie that um, to some sort of reasonable system uh, where you're unlocking things based on how well you do instead of, you know, some of those other games where it's just completely... Uh, the RNG just makes no sense. Um, uh, right here, though, you can see Phoebe just going to work. I'm keeping my shields uh, completely just torn off right now uh, and sacrificing health, but it's okay because she deals such massive damage and I'm able to uh, remember the locations of the health orbs, get myself back on track super fast. We're approaching um, our ultimate ability, uh, which for Phoebe is incredibly strong. It's called Blade Cascade. Let's we'll touch on it now uh, before you actually see it. And basically, she brings down a thunderstorm, a rainstorm of rapiers dealing huge damage uh, to a pretty big area. We're going to get to pick here another skill set here. Um, it's hard for me to read them as I'm commentating over this, but if you pause your screen, you could see uh, if you want that kind of uh, extreme detail. Um, I do like the fact that everything takes place without a pause button, um, that you do have to do this sort of on the fly uh, and, and make sure that you, you access it at a point where you're safe, or if not, you're like, heck no, I don't care. I can keep my, my health up there, even if my shields are wiped then you just go for it in the middle of the battle. And I, I like that feeling of empowerment as well, where all of a sudden you're in the midst of a fight and you unlock a new ability and all of a sudden, like, your one of your skills just gets that much stronger. So imagine, let's just take that phase gate example. Imagine you're using phase gate, you're kind of teleporting around, making sure you're in and out of danger, getting behind guys, deal damage, and then boom, you add that electric charge to phase gate and now you're that much more volatile, you're that much more powerful within the battles, um, which I think is, is super darn cool. Um, that right there you saw is that amazing Blade Cascade ability. It's bringing down extreme pain from the skies above. Phoebe is just, she has it all, right? She's got the ability to come in close with that melee, and it's very fast. As you can see here, we're not worrying about like a reload timer uh, or a clip size. We're just going to town. She also has the ability to fire a projectile from afar uh, with that Blade Barrage um, strike attack, which I believe is actually called Blade Rush, uh, but it, it fires four off in a ferocious manner that allows you to deal damage from range. You've got Blade Cascade, which does a you know AOE type of damage, and, and she's pretty hard to beat. I do have a little bit of a, of a concern of how the balance is going to be in this game. 25 characters, all these different moves, all the uh, possibilities and sort of little uh, differentiation between the DNA skill sets that you can pick and then loot and gear on top of it, it's going to take a lot of work, and if they're able to balance it, especially for multiplayer, uh, I will be mighty impressed. So far, so good, because they've kept it interesting uh, across the different character genres slash classes, where it's fun to play as Phoebe, sort of this melee class. It's fun to play as Rendy, more of a mage. It was really fun to play as Miko, and I'm excited to show you guys that video now that I finally have the footage of that, and, and the fact that he can deal damage as well as heal. Um, and I'm just excited to see how it all comes together. One, it's a glorious game to look at. More and more, I think this is an art style uh, that sure, it, it's quote unquote been done in other games or other games do it. Um, but I think Battleborn just has such a really cool, it's just got a lot of style to it. And, and it's kind of an evolution of Borderlands, which was a very heavily uh, stylized from a, from a visual standpoint. And here it is as well. And they've, they've hired on some, some really notable artists to kind of take care of even the finest of points, like the little little sparks and whatnot that come off um, some of the attacks, which just adds, like, maybe a, a not, like, check mark on the back of the box, but a subconscious extra layer of flair to the game here. Um, it looks like we are picking uh, more and more things for our character here. I'm trying to see um, cooldown reduction uh, or shield penetration. I'm going all damage heavy. I kind of like to do that, um, especially because in these demos that I played, the uh, the difficulty has been turned down. So I want to make sure we, we note that again, that this is not the real difficulty of Battleborn. It will be far uh, more challenging in the final version there as we just Blade Cascade for the heck of it. Um, 
and that will probably alter my playstyle because I play incredibly aggressive in Battleborn. One, I know where I'm going. Uh, two, you're able to do so because of whether it's the enemies not dealing enough damage or your health and, and shield being too high or just the, the numbers in general uh, kind of being off kilter for now. Um, I am excited to see how sort of the teamwork and cooperation takes shape uh, as the intended difficulty is put into place. Um, because then I feel like some of these characters, their their mentality and method will have to change. There's no way I'll be able to go in crazy uh, with Phoebe and that melee if I'm taking more damage. I'll have to stay back and pick my battles. Um, and, and that could be viewed as a negative because it's kind of super fun just to go all out, you know, like balls to the wall, pedal to the metal, uh, killing everything in sight like I've been doing here as we approach 100 kills. Um, but I do think that for the sake of the game, uh, the sake of the, the different characters, the sake of variety, it is going to be important for them to uh, have their roles and feel like you are playing a, a integral part to your team's success and not just playing, you know, mash damage uh, for for all five uh, human players. I think that's going to be critical for cooperation and eventually for the multiplayer uh, once that's revealed. You definitely want people to fit roles. You don't want the medic to be doing as much damage as the melee and, and the mage and, and so on and so forth. But here you're going to get to see an exceptional display of what the characters can do. Um, and I really, I really like that we're going to be able to align with one or two or three characters that kind of fill our fantasy uh, with the most enthusiasm. And I look forward to the day when there's Funko Pop figures of these guys or some figures and I can like be like, you know what? I really like Arendi, Phoebe, and TBD character number 24 and I want little figures of them on my desk so that when I go to war, they're watching over me uh, in on my desk. I think that'll be super cool. Um, we're heading into the more dangerous snow section of the demo. I did get to see a lot of new environments uh, in the presentation at Gamescom, and while I can't visually convey them to you, I will verbally say uh, that there was a lot of variety uh, in terms of the, the look and the enemies present. Um, so you are going to get to take your talents to more jungle foresty type areas, more desert mountainy type areas. Obviously, we've got snow areas here, industrial areas, and I think that that like sort of change of scenery is going to be uh, a lot of fun especially as you do repeat these missions uh, looking for loot and I, I've always wanted a game you know where you do almost MMO style get to play the missions over and over again in seek of in search of a better score uh, or better loot or whatnot and this game might might be that one for me you know I, I sense the chance to really dive into these systems and master your character and then have the you know, extra benefit of using some of those new ideas or, or new skills um, in multiplayer. And I love the fact that they are having sort of a top level um, upgrade system, so you will be acquiring new skins and new skills um, that will obviously significantly affect your play uh, throughout any of your, your progress in the game. So this isn't something where it's like, well, I beat single player, and now I have to like start over or whatever. It seems like it's all gonna have effect on, on each other, which is great. Um, and I like kind of that, like I said, that having that meta and that micro. I don't know that any game has ever done it this way where you've got, at least on console, where you've got sort of that huge meta of like, hey, we're, we're taking our, our profile higher and higher and then more of that, uh, you know, the, the micro um, of like, hey, within each round, within each match, I'm going from 1 to 10 as well, um, which is obviously very MOBA-esque. Um, but I like just kind of that, like, that combination of macro and micro. I think it's, it's really smart. Um, and I gotta say, like, the melee characters, I think this is the first melee that we've shown, um, are really fun. I had worried that characters like Wrath and Phoebe uh, would be a bit boring to play after some of the more exciting projectile-based characters like Arendi or Thorn. Uh, but they end up being pretty fun because you can get so up close and personal with the enemies, and it's just a totally different style of play. Uh, combining that with, like, Phoebe's phase gate, the ability to move around the battlefield quickly, like, as the difficulty is, is balanced out, I think that's going to be a critical move um, where you get in and then you phase gate away and then you deal damage if people are chasing you, which gives you a little bit more time to build uh, your, uh, your health back. You're seeing me... Scoping out that high score, 143, and we're approaching the uh, the final battle area here, so I know that 200 is in reach. This was one of my final rounds I played uh, back at San Diego Comic-Con. The sun was starting to set. It was in my eyes, but I wasn't going to let that stop me 
from delivering a surprise uh, to the Battleborn universe, which is like, it's, it's my highest round, and, and I had a lot of fun uh, definitely going for going for that score. These guys are just minced meat for my rapier as we just slice and dice straight through them uh, as quickly as we can be. And I hope that the, the lore and sort of the just... The, the flora, fauna, everything involved with Battleborn uh, maintains and, and creates an interesting ecosystem uh, for us as players to be involved. I would love to see it be something where, kind of, kind of how Borderlands, you know, got you very familiar with some of the specific enemies, and and they became notable. You see people cosplay them; they're like fun to, to look at and think about, and and you know, deal with their their world. I guess I hope that with this kind of smorgasbord of, of heroes and villains from a bunch of different locations, a bunch of different planets. I mean, if we look at the, the character variety, not just in the way that they uh, control, but also just like, hey, you've got, you know, Phoebe and, and Marquise who are from the LLC. You've got, you know, Caldarius and Wrath who are Generate. You've got Boulder and Thorn who are Eldred. You've got, uh, you know, Miko obviously is, is Eldred as well with his mushroom form. Arendi is a rogue. Oscar, Mike, Montana are peacekeepers. Um, it's going to get really interesting, I think. Um, and, and I look forward to this being one of the more uh, just, just fruitful experiences of the generation and of 2016 because there is a lot of creativity and just a lot of fun and flair in this game. It definitely doesn't have the problem of like, well, Space Marine, Space Marine, Space Marine, uh, or like, you know, big, uh, big giant troll, big giant troll, big giant troll. It seems like across the board we're going to be seeing, you know, the zaniest and also coolest collection uh, of, of individuals, whether they are on the, the good side of things or the bad side of things. This final battle um, seemed very spooky at first when I first played it. All of these enemies rushing ahead. Uh, it's, it's pretty intense. There's a bunch of guys coming from a whole lot of different portals. Eventually, we're going to get fight against um, a conspirator uh, who is sort of the mini-boss of the area. And yet, after playing this a bunch of times, like I feel like I've got the run of the battlefield, and, and that made it pretty exciting, knowing where guys are going to be. like. I think it's because the game handles so well, the controls are so physical, um, and just like that, you know, hands on the sticks, fingers on the button experience is really rewarding. It's it's interesting to still battle even if you know what's going to happen, and that's the sign of a game that has mechanics uh, that will drive it forward rather than just, you know, sparkle, shine, and fluff. And there is a lot of that in Battleborn too, um, but I'm, I'm happy to report to you guys after playing this game now for gosh. Um, one, two, three, probably five hours or so, um, that it is a very, very finely crafted uh, and polished hands on the controller, um, game is, uh, you know, as well. Uh, so we have to finish off some of these side corridors here of enemies that phase gate dealing damage to the lesser foes, and then we've got, uh, whoever that is, firing in massive damage. I think that was actually, uh, our wolf drone blasting away with his barrage. I like the fact that you can spend credits to upgrade. The Wolf Drone, I'm curious, like I mentioned before, what else we can spend credits to upgrade, and, and if we don't spend them, if they'll carry over to some sort of in-game currency, or maybe we could buy chests or, or loot drops or things like that. Uh, it's actually a... Is it a conspirator or is it a conservator? It's a conservator who's also conspiring against us. Conserving the, uh, <laughs> the forces of evil and conspiring to destroy our own uh, squad of good. Uh, but now knowing where... This boss is at, knowing where it all comes, I can just go ham. And frankly, I didn't worry about the boss so much uh, in this encounter because I wanted the most kills I possibly could get. And I knew if I focused uh, my my attacks on the big bad, I would not reach that 203 count there. And the 113,000 damage or whatever it is. You saw how quickly we crushed that boss. That was ferociously fast. And now Wolf is going to get crushed as well, which kind of sucks. But I'm hoping we can take, uh, take it to this... Ice Beast eventually, who's shooting straight for us. And ending our video today, guys and girls, thank you so much for watching. Hope you're in a fantastic day yourself. Let me know who you want to see more of uh, in the Battleborn universe in the comments down below. Hit that thumbs up button if you had fun today. That is Phoebe. That is my 200 kill, 110,000 point round there. I'd love to challenge you to beat it, and you will be able to go for that in a beta later this year, I believe, and eventually the final game, February 9th. Until that time, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Fantastic day. Drink so much. We'll see you all later.